All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the debugger in Visual Studio. Uh, you're going to see code that's in C++, but uh, this applies to C Sharp just as well. We're, we're focused more on the debugger than we are on the actual code. Uh, and I've got some nonsense code here. It really doesn't do anything. Uh, but it's a good example of what the debugger is. So what, what is the debugger? It's a built-in tool into most IDEs. Uh, probably when you've had problems up to this point, you've set um, print line statements inside or uh, console.write line or C out statements in your code uh, to better understand what the state of the variables is. For example, if I had a problem with this code here, I might put a print statement here on line nine that would print out the value of I, or it would print out the value of a particular slot uh, inside this array. Uh, there is a better way, and that's what we're gonna talk about here, and it is in using the debugger. So to, to begin with, a uh, couple of different things. In Visual Studio, you can see here at the top, there is a couple different modes that we can work in. There is debug, which you've probably been working in most of the time, and then there's also release. And the difference between these two is ultimately when you're creating an executable, uh, how efficient the libraries that you're using are. If you're about to push something out to the public, then you would probably put that in release mode. Otherwise, you would use debug mode for probably 99% of the time uh, that you're working uh, in Visual Studio. So looking at the code here, uh, it's relatively straightforward. We do have an array of floats. Uh, you can see that there are 10 of them, and I'm setting some values on the inside. What I want to be able to do is to walk through this code and visualize what's going on inside of memory and what the state of our variables um, are at any given time. Now notice over here on the left-hand side, uh, this thing is called a breakpoint. And a breakpoint is a place that the computer is going to pause as soon as it hits that particular line. To set a breakpoint is relatively straightforward. All I have to do is left click uh, here in this gray column. You can see it's not terribly difficult to do. And I can set those uh, anywhere that I want. I can set more than one, depending on what it is that I want to do. Uh, but for now, I think I'm just going to set one, and I'm going to do it here on line six. Uh, this is where I'm declaring the array of floats. So walking through this, uh, notice the output window down here. It currently has, uh, I just previously ran this to make sure that it actually did compile and everything. And what I wanna do is to walk through this code. So if going here to the top, you can see that I could click on the run like we've normally done. Uh, I might have a slightly different version of uh, Visual Studio that you have on your personal machine, but it's basically the same thing. The important part is down here at the bottom. OK, and uh, we'll we'll add some watches and things like that in just a second. If I ever want to stop debugging, notice that there is a stop debugging icon that's up here at the top. Uh, for now, I'm not going to do anything with that. I just kind of want to trace through this code. Now, going through it, uh, you can see that here on line seven, the program is actually paused and I've got an array of floats here. Notice that because I'm in debug mode, if I mouse over anything at a particular time, it's going to tell me the state of what's going on. In fact, it probably won't like I here at all because right now it's not, it hasn't been declared. We haven't really made it that far in the program. So again, if I mouse over R, you can see the values on the inside of that array and it's a bunch of garbage, uh, negative 10 billion or whatever that number is. So what I want to do is I want to, I'm really interested to see how the array is going to be filled. I've got a loop here that's going to change the values. And to do that, I can add a watch down here on the bottom. And what a watch is, is what it sounds like. I'm going to, I'm going to watch a particular variable. In this case, I want to watch all of the values. I want to watch the entire array. Fortunately, there are only 10 values here. So I can type in the name of the variable that I want to watch. And as soon as I hit return, uh, you can see that it puts array here as a variable that I can watch. Interestingly, because this is an array, I can drop this down and you can see the values on the inside of the array. So it's a really good way to visualize what's going on with regard to memory. Now, um, if I were to try to watch I at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add it. You're going to see the behavior there. Uh, notice that it says I is not defined yet because we haven't made it to that line of code. OK, so continuing on here, I want to trace through this code. I want to walk through this code. And to do that, 
If you go up here the, to the debug menu, you can see dropping down here a little bit halfway down the menu uh, is step into and step over and step out. Uh, these will become more important a little bit later on, uh, especially when we're talking about methods. But for now, we're just going to use this step into and that'll satisfy everything that we want. In fact, it's probably going to be about the same thing. Whether you hit F10 or F11, you should probably get the same behavior or close to the same behavior. So if I do that, um, notice that things start to change. I've now executed line seven. That's completed. I'm about to execute line eight. OK, how do I know that I've executed line seven? Well, you can see I set the breakpoint here. I've put the value one into array slot zero. And if you look down here, you can see array slot zero now has the value of one. OK, right now I haven't executed the line eight, so you can see that it says that I is currently some random number, uh, negative 85 billion or whatever it comes out to be. Uh, and so we're about to execute this line. Also notice, and this is specific to Visual Studio, uh, you can see that the amount of time that it actually took to complete uh, that line. And so it says less than one millisecond has elapsed, which is, which is fine. And so if you're timing things and you're really into real-time systems, this would be of value to you. I'm going to continue uh, by pressing F11. You can now see that our assignment of I starts out as one has executed, and you can see one is the value for I down here uh, because we put that watch on there. Also notice that uh, we're about to mess with slot one. I is currently one, so slot one of array is going to get I plus one. Uh, so when we execute that, you're gonna see that currently array slot one has the value of two. And then I say if the uh, value of I is equal to one, then we're going to continue. So we're going to skip over that and say, let's just move on to the next thing. Uh, so we're creating this kind of base case, let's say. OK, so we go back to the top. Notice that the I++ has not yet occurred. I is still one. And then as soon as I go back into the loop, I'll hit F11 again, then you can see that I is now two. OK, at this point, we can start to trace through the code. And I'll just keep hitting F11 a couple of times so that you can see what's going on here uh, down below. If you're looking down here on the watch, you can see that we're assigning values here into uh, the array. And where it gets a little bit more interesting is if I go here towards the end, you can see I is seven now. Continuing on, I is eight. And then I is nine. And this should be the last, uh, the last thing that happens. We go back to the top. Notice that I actually, um, in this case, says that it doesn't make it to 10. Uh, it on the in the inside of the variable, it actually did make it to 10 because that's how this uh, expression here became false. Um, but I think you can see the power of using the debugger. It's relatively straightforward. You set breakpoints here on the left. Uh, you start debug mode and then you add watches down here to the bottom, uh, depending on what it is that you're trying to debug. So I hope that helped. Uh, I'll go ahead and stop the debugger here and um, do uh, do good stuff with your code.